welcome to Life Coaching on the Move. I'm your host, Dawn Fisk. Thank you so much for dialing in today and choosing this podcast above any other podcast that's out there and available to you. If you are new, then um, exciting times. There are plenty of previous episodes for you to listen to. Start at number one um, first rather than last week's um, and going backwards. It just makes more sense and sets out how I coach really. Um, If you're a regular listener, then thank you so much. I'm really, really privileged and grateful that you choose to come back each week. Thank you. Um, Today we are talking about are you happy or are you not happy at the moment and if not what we can do about that and um, the pursuit of happiness really and confidence, greater confidence. Are you feeling confident or not confident? So some useful strategies, listen to the techniques and then do try them out because um, It's always worth actually applying what we listen to. I know I listen to lots of podcasts, but actually trying them is where they will become most useful. Rather than just interesting, they'll actually help in a practical level. If this does help you, then please do feel free to send a link to a friend if you feel it would help them or put it on your social media or tell tell people about it and spread the word um, because uh, that's the way we get these things out there and it may well be I've had clients that have said oh that episode it just answered everything I needed it to answer at that time so it could be just what somebody in your life needs at the moment and their previous episodes are on such a host of different subjects um, social anxiety and anxiety itself and achieving our goals, getting out of our comfort zones and confidence, increasing our confidence, Um, time management, getting a job, CVs, interviews, they're all there on the podcast, there's loads there. Um, So just sift in and out of all of them, have a little dip into any of them. I'm just going to crack on now, I think. Um, All I would say is there are some dates for workshops coming up and there are online programs and the blog. So if you want to have a little look through the website, then please do feel free www.milestone-coaching.co.uk. You can contact me through there as well. Um, And you can book in for a 30 minute consultation, chat, conversation, phone call, just to see if coaching is something that might help you. It's no uh, commitment, no obligation at all. It's just a 30 minute phone conversation for free and you can choose after that. So what have you got to lose? Anyway, uh, let's crack on. Today I thought I would share with you a little bit of my own experience this week. Um, This week I have taken my son, my 16-year-old, and my good dear friend and her 16-year-old son. Both sons happen to be best friends. They were born within three days of each other, have grown up together and uh, get on incredibly well. It's a very special friendship. So she and I took our two boys together uh, on a two-day away trip with lots of activities, which we did two years ago. And you may remember on a previous episode, uh, me talking about how on that, I really got out of my comfort zone and did the longest, fastest zip wire in the world over uh, near Snowden, uh, um, North Wales near Snowdonia and had a fantastic time, terrifying, um, really out of my comfort zone, I hate heights, and did it. And what an effect it had on my well-being and my inner confidence and self-esteem and that I would highly, highly recommend getting out of our comfort zones. I'm going to say the same thing. It's a revision, a reminder. This time, (laughs) I've just realised how... What a a wimp I sound. I also do not like water. I'm not a very good swimmer at all. I'm not a strong swimmer at all. And uh, I much rather my feet on the ground, whether it's heights or water. I like to be on land in the woods. Um, So my friend decided we would book a two-hour paddle boarding, standing on paddle boards and doing that on the coast, uh, followed the next day by a three-hour kayaking tour. Neither activity of which I would opt to do ordinarily. And I realised today when we were packing up to come home that she, my friend, is very, very good for making me stop being a coward. 
I think I have a tendency to be a bit of a coward and hold back and stay in my comfort zone, which so many of us do, don't they? I don't know if this relates to you. I don't know if you this is speaking to you and whether it's you. But given a choice, I would um, like to stay safe. But staying safe, it's not safe, is it, as such? Because it's our inner voice keeping us in our inner self-induced um, prison. It's not a comfort zone, it's a little prison. I would have sat on the edge, waving at them and looking after the bags given half a chance. But I would have missed out. And in fact, not only was it really, really good fun, really enjoyable, thoroughly enjoyed it, and have made lovely memories with my son and my friend and her son and something we will always remember. And funnily enough, in the car, we were watching the video of us doing the zip wire two years ago. We will always remember that. It will go to... Um, you know, with me to my deathbed. It was a fantastic experience. I would highly recommend it, by the way, if you want a great adrenaline um, activity is to go to Wells and do the zip wire. Um, And so I realised she stops me being a coward because that's my knee-jerk reaction. Not only did we enjoy it and we make those great memories, however, also it was really good for me in my self-esteem, in my uh, pursuit to gain greater inner confidence, which is my mission for all listeners. It's my mission for me as a coach for all my clients is to help their life skills, help their confidence increase and, and help them increase their confidence, give them the skills and the strategies of any of my clients to build self-esteem, self-belief um, and therefore bring better quality to our lives because if we've got more self-esteem more confidence it's proven the more confident we are the more things we'll do the more people we'll talk to the more places we'll visit the more things we'll try Uh, lack of confidence holds people back without a doubt it holds back their careers it holds back their social scene it holds back perhaps love interests it holds human beings back or if they've got good confidence it pushes them forward so for me it is my life mission as a coach to help everybody including myself I'm working on it all the time to expand our confidence because it just improves our lives without a shadow of a doubt in every way I don't mean bullshit arrogant cocky confidence don't mean that I mean inner confidence where we believe in ourselves we say helpful things in our head we encourage ourselves and we push ourselves forward and we're prepared to dip our toe have a go get out there so that activity despite me being a little bit nervous and at first very tense and (laughs) rigid as you like and wobbling around and and scared as I got more and more confidence on uh, on the board, I, I began to relax, began to enjoy it. But when I got off and finished, I, I felt taller. I felt bigger in myself. I thought, God, I can do that. Bring on the next thing. I felt emotionally and um, just within my own outlook in life, better about who I was. Be- more optimistic, more enthusiastic for new experiences, um, proud, a sense of pride, a sense of achievement. And although it was only small, those small things, if we keep doing small things where you think, yes, I did that, I achieved that, I pushed myself. Um, I was guest speaker the other evening to a great uh, group, a nutritional based group where they're trying to improve their um diet, their nutrition, their health, their well-being, really big group, real good following. And as they master better eating habits, they feel better with their body image, they feel better in their health and their energy and they're sleeping better, etc. Because they are now on this mission, they have now signed up for this, they're now on the right path, they're all supporting each other and they're following a certain regime. As they achieve that, they will feel better in themselves mentally, confidence-wise, resilience-wise, because they know they've overcome maybe years of poor nutrition, um, not looking after themselves, poor health, um, and 
a negative body image, etc. So what, it doesn't matter what we do, whether we're paddle boarding, zip wiring, speaking in front of a huge audience for the first time, going for a job outside of our remit, having our first date with somebody um, that we've liked for a long time but haven't had the courage to talk to, whatever it is, it has a much bigger impact than just that one act because it ripples out to the other parts of our life in a good, positive way. So if we are mastering good nutrition and feeling healthier, we feel good about ourselves because we feel we've taken the reins. We feel we're in control. We feel proud of ourselves and a sense of achievement. So no, ma- no matter what the activity, whether you've just started to run and you're just mastering couch to 5K, um, whether you're just starting a new course, a new skill, um, and you're getting more and more confident at it. And I would say, and I think I may have said that this recently, or at least planned to say it, that we don't get the confidence first and then master that skill of looking after our nutrition or that course or speaking that language or being a really, uh, you know, we don't get confident first and then become a golfer. We get confidence by doing it. It's the actions first that bring the confidence. So yes, we could read lots of books about how to play golf. We could watch lots of YouTube video about how to play golf. We could order a great new fantastic golf set and bag and all the kits and all the clothes. We could get all of that, but we still wouldn't be a a confident golfer until we'd had a couple of lessons, played a couple of games, learned what didn't work, learned a few things and mastered it and got better at it that's when the confidence comes. That's when we can say we're confident golfer or getting confident or getting more confident. Um, And by the way, it's not an on-off switch. It's not confident or not confident. It's more confident. And it's a bit like happiness. You know, um, we often say, are you happy Yes or no, like there's an on off switch. Yes, I'm happy. No, I'm not happy. Like a, an A or a B, or the lights on or the lights off. But that's not true, is it? I work with clients to say, let's move you up the scale of happiness. Let's try and find things that make you happier. They increase your happiness. I don't think happiness or, in fact, confidence is an on-off switch like a light. It isn't. You can build your confidence. So you might rate yourself out of 10, 10 being the highest you could possibly be. You might rate yourself currently or at a 2 or a 3. And so I'll work with clients to say, how can we push you to a 4? What would a 6 look like for you? What would you be doing if you rated yourself 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 in in a scale of confidence what would you be doing in life that you're not currently doing what what would it mean what would it look like for you because it's different for everybody for some it might just be that they'd be in a much better job where they don't feel terrified and dread it every Sunday evening and don't sit in the corner with their back turned to everybody and not mix in the canteen, bring their own sandwiches to avoid the canteen, that sort of thing. For them, it might just be really comfortable at work, on the bus and at home with their neighbours and friends, just living with an ease, with a calm, without that stress and nerves. That might be confidence for one person. For another, it might be being able to Um, go and talk to a huge audience or talk at big meetings and presentations at work or go to conferences and host an exhibition stand and talk to new clients uh, in a relaxed manner without getting really stressed. For others, it may just be going, being able to go to the school gates and talk to other parents, looking them in the eye and just talking to other parents and not feeling awful and rubbish and comparing themselves detrimentally to those other parents and thinking they're, they're useless. It may just be being able to take their kids to school and say, bye-bye, see you later, hi, and talk to the other parents and just feel relaxed and be able to go into a swimming pool or a gym or something or into town without stressing and trying to avoid the eye contact of other people that they vaguely know, just having one or two more friends. So it's different for everybody. And so too is happiness, the pursuit of happiness. 
what makes you happy may be very, very different to what makes me happy. In fact, actually, my friend and I were just chatting about this. She was saying, where would you move to if you could? If you could change things and move to your ideal setting, where would it be? And for her, it would be down in the south where we were, down near sort of Dorset, Bournemouth, Swanwick area. She would love a place down there, be near the sea and be able to walk all across the headlands and, and things like that. For me, it wouldn't be near the sea. It would be woodlands and countryside and the quiet and things like that. For others, it may be in a, a gorgeous apartment in a, a city. It may be in London or um, Edinburgh or somewhere like that. There's no right or wrong, but what makes you happy? It's not just about our living areas either. It may be you like your own company, you just want to be left alone and have some quiet. That may make you happy. For others, it may be that you're lonely and you want lots of company. Um, or a partner, or something like that, you know? So, if happiness were on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rate yourself at the moment? In the last few weeks, that's a good question. Why don't you actually um, mull that over? In the last few weeks, on average, where would you rate your happiness out of 10? On your own personal scale of what happiness means to you. And I know it fluctuates hour by hour, day by day, etc. But on average, has it been a good few weeks? Have you felt good? Have you felt overall generally happy? If it's below five, why? What's the trigger? What's the reason? It may be that you're experienced some awful you know, event in your family life or your life or whatever. You may be battling challenges, um, difficulties, living with some issues. You may be going through a tough time that... Uh, or if life's just normal run of the mill and you've put it at a four or a six, somewhere around the, the average point, what can you do? What can any of us do, whether we're living with issues or not? What can any of us do to make ourselves feel happier? How could you move up a point on your scale? Or two points or three? You know, what needs to happen? to make you start laughing again, have some joy again, have some calm, some peace, an inner smile, just feel good, feel optimistic, feel some enthusiasm when you wake in the morning, enjoy your day, go to bed at night feeling good day, it was a good weekend looming, looking forward to the weekend, oh, Sunday night, that was a good weekend. How can that happen for you? What could you do to ensure that happens? Because not all of it, I admit, is in our control, but much of it is in our control. And if you know what makes you happier, can you be taking the reins? Can you be booking things in, planning things, ensuring things happen, juggling things around, um, turning things down because they make you unhappy or whatever? Being a little bit more in control, being more intentional about it, because we often just get through each week, get through, get through, and it's not always intentional. It's not always conscious. We just, we just, every day just happens. It happens. Life sometimes we're on a bit of a hamster wheel, and it just Monday's gone before we know it. We're on Thursday, and before we know it, the weekend's just flown by, and you think, God. Don't really get much achieved or done or booked or planned. It wasn't intentional, it wasn't planned, it wasn't thought through. It just happened. And sometimes that's when we feel less content, less happy. So looking ahead, by looking back, we can learn by hindsight. Looking ahead to the next month, what could you do for in your diary, your calendar? Um, what can you book in? Um, and, or move, or cancel, adjust, you know. Uh, what do you need to do that makes you happy? <laughs> In a really very sad way, I realised when I was thinking about this myself that actually I'm happier on a daily basis when the place is tidy. I can't work very well when it's messy on a Monday and the kids have it's been raining and their boots and shoes and clutter and mess and school bags and the dogs have made a mess and, and the beds need changing and the washing's piling up. I actually don't feel good then. I don't. I'm not productive. I don't work well, I'm much more productive, much happier, I think, um, much more efficient when all the decks have been cleared and the, the hoover's been run round and the, I'm on top of the washing and everything's calm and everything's, you know, 
less chaotic. I know a chaotic desk or a chaotic home, chaotic mind. And I think that's so true for me. A lot of other people wouldn't even notice it. It doesn't affect them. And that's, again, we're all different. But for me, I'm much happier when the, it's clear and it's all tidy. Um, so I know that I, I'm going to have a better week if I just crack on with that first thing at the beginning, get on top of it, make sure there's food in the fridge, everything's dealt with and I feel, right, that's all done. Now I can focus. Now I'm in control and it's all sorted. That's just the way I am and if that's the way you are, for me, it feels... It, it doesn't feel great if it's not that way. Um, I could work on trying to adjust myself to that or I just recognise that that's a need that I've got um, and then go with it. So I think we're wrong to think of happiness as an on-off. We either are happy or we're sad or cross or angry. I don't think that's true. I think we're along a scale and we can endeavour to try and push ourselves up that scale um, a little bit further. And so my question to you, therefore, the learning from today is how can you push yourself up a couple more points. Are you happier when you're with friends? Are you happier when you're alone? Are you happier when you've exercised? Are you happier when you relax? Are you happier when um, you've cleared up or are you happy just being spontaneous? Are you happier outside or inside Um, with your children or having some quiet time? You know, what makes you happy? Watching a comedy film or listening to music, you know, all of those things, there are so many, I can't even think of uh, the amount, there is infinite number of things that can or can't make you happy, it might be going out on a motorbike in the woods, might be your thing, or playing tennis, whatever it is, Um, we just need to intentionally live our life knowing what those things are, and bringing more in, and if there aren't many for you, if you're sat there thinking, well, I don't know, actually don't know what makes me happy then that's a big big alarm call for you to alert you to the fact that maybe life is very very short and we need to find things all of us need to find things that do give us joy contentment sense of achievement happiness and all of that brings greater inner confidence about uh, more confidence being in our own skin Um, and that is such a good thing to aim for So, um, that's what I want to leave you with this week, actually, I think, um, is how to find more happiness and more confidence, make it intentional, be in charge, take the reins, think it through, think about that scale, one to ten, for both of them, confidence and happiness, and think about how you can push yourself up that scale wherever you are, and add in more And then go out there and make that happen. Pick up the phone, make some calls, invite your friends or whatever it is that you realise you need to do and arrange it, commit to it, plan it in. Um, If it's an unhappiness that you've got, talk about your unhappiness, talk to friends about it, try and deal with the issues, talk to a coach or a therapist or whatever. But we do not have to stay where we are now at the moment. We can always do things about it. We can always find some things that will help a little, even if it's just talking it through or journaling it if there's no one to talk about, writing it down or recording your voice and your thoughts onto your phone and recording all your worries and your challenges. Just getting them out of your head from worrying around. That's the first step. Um, adding in some humour and some comedy. It's release of the endorphins and it's a great antidote to sadness and um, unhappiness. All of those sorts of strategies. Build all of those strategies in. And if you can, please, 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 I would so highly um, recommend it. And I know I'm on a high from my feelings of getting out of my comfort zone or my prison, whatever you want to call it. Also, try and embrace getting out of your comfort zone. Um, if in doubt, just say yes. That's the best word. Use yes as your answer. Um, and just try it. Try that new activity. Get out. Do something that you wouldn't normally do. Surround yourself by friends that push you a little bit. When I was forced to go white water rafting in France with some friends, 
<laughs> the, the, the friend, the husband of the family that I was with, I have to say, I did not see him favourably on the day that he made me do white water rafting. I hated it until I'd finished, got out, and then I've never forgotten it. And I'm now eternally grateful to him for being harsh with me and not empathising and sympathising, just taking no no nonsense, no nonsense approach and just get in there, Dawn. <laughs> and I did, and it, it was fine. It was absolutely fine. And now another thing is ticked off my list. Another one of those things that I wouldn't have done given a choice. Someone else took the choice away from me, pushed and my confidence grew as a result. Surround yourself by people like that. Um, no nonsense supporters. <laughs> and if you haven't got any of them, then give me a call because I'll be that person if you want. Anyway, speaking of which, visit the website www.milestone-coaching.co.uk um, or email where you can email me and look at the blog and look at the courses coming up and all sorts of other things and the different coachings and the different training courses I offer to companies and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or just email me dawn at milestone-coaching.co.uk or book in a, for a three 30-minute telephone conversation where we can chat about whatever the... The topic is that's on your mind that you may or may not want coaching on and we can establish whether that would work for you. Charges, um, dates, all of those practical logistical things we can see on that 30 minute no obligation phone call whether it could or couldn't be the answer for you. So just, just book one of those in and we'll take it from there. There's no commitment at all. It's just the initial conversation. So Go out there and find some joy and some happiness and expand your confidence and reap the benefits in all other areas of your life that all will be impacted upon positively. Uh, career, everything. What is there not to want from that? What is there to? What have you got to lose? You've got everything to gain. Go for it. Enjoy it. Drop me a line and share it with me. And I will speak to you on next week's episode of Life Coaching on the Move. 